Welcome to Remnant Online Followers. Please kindly subscribe. Thank you. You think two young ladies just woke up overnight and suddenly redefined beauty and think beauty is nakedness. You don't know that there are other teachers teaching in the spirit. Suddenly beauty is now nakedness. A whole world rises up and suddenly wants to redefine marriage. That marriage is between two adults. They mustn't be male or female. They suddenly became wise. They are princes. When this thing began to grow in me, I didn't know what it was. There was a time that life began to subdue me. Life began to subdue me. I was struggling with lust. Our world is wicked. You turn to your phone, you see naked people. You turn to movies, you see naked people. You say, okay, you are no longer watching. You go to the market, you see naked people. What do we do? Should we go and hide in the bedroom? I will take three days and fast. The moment I'm coming out of fasting, I'm seeing a naked person. How are you? I'm looking for where they say big. You are looking for where they say big. It's in front of my house. Does this look like a shop? And the devil keeps sending arrows. Sending arrows. Lord, what do I do? I've heard people's messages. I've applied them. I've asked for counsel. No one is working. And the Lord told me, the answer is on your inside. Follow the promptings. Follow. Follow. There's a realm called the invincible realm. Follow. And I started listening. And the first place he started from, he said, forgive. He didn't talk about lust. Forgive. And I am a high-tempered person. If you try it, I tell you immediately. He said, no, don't respond. Forgive. Somebody will offend me. I will come and sit down and justify why the person should be the one to apologize. He just said, forgive. I will go with body and say, you know that thing that happened. You were wrong, but it's okay. <laughs> say, that's not what I told you to do. I say, forgive. Ah! Ah! I'll say, okay, when the next one happened, and I will ignore, I kept struggling. Until a point came, as I began to yield to the promptings, you will come as if you are dying, you say, sorry. The person will now look at you. I thought you say, we will fight. I was ready for you. Ah! You will die. You will die. And God will not come and pacify you. He will not keep quiet. When you die, a measure of flesh will now die. Now, all of those strands of flesh are what demons coordinate together to build lust. But a superior teacher in wisdom is now training you. When he finished with that, he took me to another point. He said, give. People will come to use me. He will say, give them. Ah. Uh -uh. Sometimes I will give and I will have nothing. He said, give. I said, Lord, are you trying to bless me? Is it about reward? We are not talking reward. We are saving your soul. And I kept giving. I kept giving. I migrated from there. I went to another level. He said, don't seek honor. Ah. They will come to a place you will hide behind for a long season. After he dealt with all of those things, he now enter prayer. I will sleep at night. He will wake me. Most times, what happens is in church is masquerading. Everybody is acting pious, sanctimonious. Find them in the office. Find them in the midst of heated argument. Find them in the market. You will discover there is a spiritual bipolar disorder taking place here, infused by religion. But a man who is yielding to life, it becomes natural. Even in the heart, the heat of argument and controversy, he's the way he is. He's stable. There's gravity. That one has become a son. That's the type God can vet and say, this is my beloved son. He is like me in all conditions. But you don't read that. You become that. And the way you become it is through the prompting. Some people think to deal with lust is to start with prayer. That, play, that prayer can ride on your lust. Because now that you know you have a stamina in the place of prayer, you will now wait. When they are talking prayer, you stand up, you say, these people, they are not ready. Wait, let me drill them. Pride will now anchor on that prayer. 
Everybody is praying. You are just doing like this. That means they are learning. They are learning. When I carry the mic today, then you now carry the mic. Ikobo, Avelo, Jazolo. Yo. The first, in the first five minutes, you want everybody to know the difference in atmosphere. You just want them to see first. Let them know the difference. Zebobula, Shababodo. When you now, when you now finish stratifying the atmosphere, you now pocket your hand and say, you see, this is what we have been trying to tell you. You will die in secret sin. Because that flesh, the devil will use that flesh in another corridor to kill you. It was after God dealt with a lot of things before he started talking prayer with me. And when I started praying, I knew what help meant. You will pray for 15 minutes, it looked like 10 hours. Shabba, shabba. He now told me, put your work clock by the side. We are traveling. We are journeying. Put your work clock by the side. That was when I knew the layers of ascension. Because he wanted to carry me to the presence. It's in the presence that transfiguration takes place. But life will be the one to help you go there. Because life will mortify. Light will renew. But only the presence transfigures. Because it's in the presence you were created. The substance of your making is in the presence. But it will take renewal of mind and mortification of flesh to enter the presence. And so when God was teaching me about life, the final corridor we entered was the journey to the presence. And we began. The first thing was to kill distractions. It took many months. That was when I knew prayer doesn't end when you say in the name of Jesus. As you finish saying in the name of Jesus, it will tell you to off your phone, your, delete your Facebook. Because he's fighting distraction. Those are weights pulling you down. As you are trying to ascend, they are like bags of stone drawing you down. Anxiety, fear, reproach, anger, bitterness. They are weights in the spirit. That's why I said to put aside every weight that doth easily beset you. It's in the corridor of spirit life that you will understand it. And I will struggle, pray for two hours. I'm still with bitterness. He will say, you can't travel. You are heavy. There is a wind waiting for you. And the eagle, it mounts on the wings. You can't find your wings if you are heavy. Alight yourself of burdens. And you will pray for hours. Pray for days. Pray for weeks until you are rid of burdens. When those weights begin to fall, then you know that ascension is about to begin. All of that is a technology of life. That's why I tell people, life, prayer is not judged by time. No, prayer is judged by ascension. How far are you going? Because you and I can pray in this room. One person will go to Zion. Another person will remain here. It depends on how light they are in the spirit. Because when the eagle wants to ascend, he looks for the wind. He mounts it. He mounts it. But you are, if you are heavy, you can't catch the wind. And so what prayer will do first is to rid you of weights. You will be there praying in tongues. The weight is there. You will keep eating different boiling points. A point will come. Anger will go. The bitterness will go. The malice will go. As they are going, you will now discover you will enter the second level. The second level is the realm of stamina. Stamina. Not because you are there for long, but because you are focused. Because when distraction is taken, you zoom into God. You know that your prayer is beginning to go far. And as you are praying, you can be on one thing for four hours. Tata, rakakata, sadaka. Even when you stop praying and you go out of your house, your attention is still there. That means you are still praying. You have stopped the activity, but prayer has not ended. Because the, day, the moment you say amen, that's when God will start talking. And you will discover you have trained your focus. That focus you have developed is what we call spiritual stamina. And as you build on stamina, build on stamina, you will enter the third layer. That's the realm of charging. He said, you dearly beloved, building up yourself in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. In the realm of charging, what God does is that he brings supplies. That's when you can now sense the anointing like oil. 
the oil will literally begin to flow. You can touch it. You now know that you are no longer natural. At that level, you become a battle axe. That's where your spiritual sense is open. You can be praying and suddenly the contract you are bidding for will open before you. And you begin to see what you need to do. You are no longer functioning with your mind. You have entered a heightened realm. Everything in you that is of God begins to open. Begins to open. Ah! That's when you start enjoying prayer. The first two is spiritual discipline. But this one is rest. Because sometimes as you are praying, the energy will come on you so much, it will break you. And you will find yourself on the floor. Ah! 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 You can do that for four hours. It's no longer you praying. There is a spirit praying from within you. You have entered another realm. Sometimes as you are doing that prayer, the whirlwind will carry you and you will find yourself from your altar. Ta -ta 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 -ta. Barak, something is happening that you can't contain. Your courtesy goes away. Your composure goes away. Your coordination goes away. A lion is about to come out of your inside. Sometimes as you are praying, you will discover the heat will be too much. You will melt. In the place of prayer, you will melt. You will find your body squeezing. Squeezing. You don't know what is happening. God is rebuilding you. He's rebuilding you. All of that is life at work. Life will take you from distraction. Take you into focus. And then will take you into realm of fire. Where you are charged. And when a man becomes charged, all he's waiting for is God. Nothing moves him anymore. And then when you hit that realm, then the realm of the voice will open. That's when you will hear, come up Peter. Come up Peter. The proof that a man is beginning to yield to the promptings of life is not religion, it's sonship. When a man begins to yield to the dictates of life, when you look at him, the law, the protocol of sonship begins to grow on his inside. And there are two things that define sonship. The first thing that defines sonship is imaging. Imaging. Every time you see a son, he reflects the father. So when you see a man who is praying, don't be moved. Check the character. We are in a generation where people brag with prayer and do all kinds of things in the name of prayer. The highest arrogance you see in church today is when people are praying. Talking things that are not consistent with the nature and the character of God's spirit. When you look at them, you know this one is religion. It is just flesh boasting itself. It's flesh. This is flesh at work. But when a man begins to yield to life, because life will stir you to pray. Life will stir you to study. All of those are the things life does. But the sign that it is life at work is that sonship will begin to emerge. And sonship is imaging. They say in Genesis 1.26, let us make man in our own image after our likeness. In Hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1 to 3, when he spoke about him as the son, he called him the brightness of his glory. It's called imaging. Sonship, if you see my son, he's a, a, a small version of me. In fact, some of the characters I exhibit At six months, the mom will look at him and say, this is you. And I can't deny it. It's imaging. The guy is a hard man. You can't stop him. What kind of stubbornness is this? He took it from somewhere. My head is like a rock. I'm a stone. At eight months, the guy is already rocky. Because he's imaging the father. He cannot do otherwise. And so what life does is to bring you to a point where you image God. And so when we see you, what we see now are things that are traced beyond you. We begin to hear echoes, characters, conducts, operations that are deeper than you. Even if we probe you to your last ancestor, we know that this goodness is not in them. We know that this brokenness is not in them. We know that this kindness is not in them. Yes, you, you are a bit kind, you are kind, but we, don't, we know this thing didn't come from your father because your father was not so kind. You are so broken, 
your, your father is humble, but your grandfather is arrogant. So when we trace your lineage, we know that some of these godly tendencies you are exuding now is because you have bicoted a natural lineage and you have connected to a spiritual lineage. Your transformation is at the mercy of how much you yield to life. God decided to make it in such a way that nobody can deny. It is happening deep on your inside. You can't deny it. In fact, when life becomes strong in you, you will discover you have a problem with somebody and you lose your sleep. If you like, go to a, a stadium, fly to London and watch Chelsea. When you are done shouting, the moment you come out of that match, the teacher will come back and say, that argument, you were wrong. You were wrong. You may be a governor. Nobody can tell you the truth to the face, but not life. The voice of life will rebuke you and it will rebuke you without quoting the words. It will tell you you were wrong. In fact, if we go further and tell you you were manipulative when you were talking. And when you want to argue, you say, you are becoming a beast. And if you don't stop, you say, if you don't stop, you will die. Nobody can tell you that. Some people are so big that even their pastor are careful in talking to them. Not life. Because life is immortal. It existed before you were created. And so there's nothing you become that life will fear you. The ministry of the fullness. It's an organic ministry. It works in the hearts of men with a desire to mortify their flesh so that the propensities of the spirit that is locked in them can find expression. There is an operation taking place on your inside. It may not be loud. It may not sound religious. But if you know from here that that thing happening on your inside is the prompting of life, you will not try it. Because usually the way it works is that it draws you to where it has authority. So it draws you to God's presence. It draws you to a fellowship. It draws you to a word. It draws you to prayer. As it's happening, just follow it. Don't think, don't seek of seeking an angel. Just follow it. Follow it gradually. You may come to the prayer and sleep throughout. Next week, the prayer is on. It will still say, come. Just keep coming. It's growing. Lost is fighting life. But if you give life a chance, it will subdue lust. Sometimes you carry a message. You say, hear this message. You put the message, you sleep off. Don't worry, be sleeping. If the devil can sow why men slept, God too can sow why men sleep. Just be hearing. Sometimes he puts the message, the, the, the worship of a minister. You are just hearing the man, hearing the man. You think you are enjoying and don't see any singing. Don't see any singing. And you think you are having a good time. After a while, when you go to the bus, you are no longer with the tape, but the song continues. And this time around, you are no longer singing and dancing. You are being instructed. Because the word that he spoke in that song become a teacher in your spirit man. And that teacher will come with Koboko to shape you until you obey. Sometimes if you refuse, even when you go to sleep, the song will still be singing. Because that's life at work. You can't sleep away from here. There is a realm where men don't sleep. Because even while you say you are sleeping, your spirit is alive. So the teacher will continue. That's how men gradually enter the frequency of life. And when they enter, sonship is born. In every dispensation, the gates of hate is open. And princes come to the earth. That's why we need carriers of the fullness. Those who can look at the princes and say, go back. And the prince, we have no choice. Those who can say, Lord, restore. And it must happen. Because when they speak, heaven back them up. It's called the ministry of the fullness. And that's why the ministry of the fullness begins with life, light. And then it enters the presence where men are reconfigured. So when that is done, we can bring kingdom. Thank you for watching. Please kindly like, comment, subscribe, and turn on your notification bell so you always get notified whenever we post a new video. And don't forget to share. Thank you.